Being able to talk about the past is obviously very important, even if your house is not in danger of burning down. And in conversational German, the perfect tense is used for doing just that. And as German does this in nearly the same way as English, we have a great head start. So I suppose I have to get up then and do some more explaining so that you can be transported into the past. Let's start by looking at the similarities between German and English. We have talked about the present tense. We have worked hard on the cases. So now let's have a look at the perfect tense. We have talked, and we have worked, are both examples of the perfect tense in English. We use have or has and the past participle of the verb worked and talked. The past participle stays the same in all singular and plural forms, but there are quite a lot of irregular past participles that have to be learnt. So, I read the book, bring the flowers and eat the cake becomes, I have read the book, brought the flowers and eaten the cake. The perfect tense in German is also formed by the auxiliary haben, or sein if there's a change of place or state, and the past participle of the main verb. Ich habe nichts gesagt. Wir haben Tennis gespielt. Sie haben ein Konzert gehört. Just as in English, the past participle remains the same, regardless of who did the activity. Many of the past participles in German are formed in a predictable and regular way, but there are also a lot of irregular forms that have to be learnt. This is a chapter of grammar where industry is definitely more important than intellect, as it's mostly about memorizing the past participles of the irregular verbs and, of course, practicing them. So let's tackle the major issue first. How do we form the past participle? Well, for the regular verbs, it's very straightforward. We take the stem part of the infinitive, in other words, the verb minus the en ending, and then we add a ge at the beginning and a t at the end. Sagen. G sag t. Ich habe nichts gesagt. Where we have a separable prefix in verbs like einkaufen or abholen, the g is put in between the prefix and the stem. So we get einkaufen, eingekauft. Ich habe Brot eingekauft. Abholen, abgeholt. Er hat sie abgeholt. Regular verbs with inseparable prefixes like besuchen or verkaufen already have a prefix, so they don't get a ge, a g at the beginning, only a t at the end. Besuchen, besuchte. Ich habe meinen Onkel besucht. Verkaufen, verkaufte. Ich habe mein Haus verkauft. There are also a number of verbs in German which are irregular in various ways. Some, the so-called weak irregular verbs, retain the GE and T frame but change the vowel in their stem, like these ones. Bringen. Ich habe die Blumen gebracht. Denken. Wir haben an sie gedacht. Kennen. Sie haben ihn nicht gekannt. Wissen. Er hat die Antwort gewusst. The GE at the beginning of the participle is also retained by the strong irregular verbs. However, after that they can be irregular in various ways, changing just the stem vowel or the whole stem. Luckily, their tail end is uniform again, as they all simply keep the infinitive ending en. Sehen. G -s -e -n. Gesehen. Finden. G -fund -n. Gefunden. Nehmen. G -nom -n. Genommen. Irregular inseparable prefix verbs like bekommen or gefallen are easy. They don't change at all because they already have a prefix fused to the stem and as irregular verbs retain the en ending. Bekommen. Ich habe Blumen bekommen. Gefallen. 
Der Film hat mir gefallen. And last, and pretty much least as well, there are the Latin-based verbs ending in ihren. This group just takes the ending t with no prefix. Studieren. Studierte. Studiert. Interessieren. Interessierte. Interessiert. And those are all the rules we can give you. For the most part, you just have to learn the past participles of irregular verbs. There is bound to be a list of them in your textbook no matter which book you're using. And really, it's not such a big deal. As with nouns, where you memorize gender and plural along with the word, you just learn the past participle along with the infinitive. After all, you have no problem with the English irregular past participles, which are at least as numerous. And some of them even follow similar patterns. Compare to sing. I have sung. Singen. Ich habe gesungen. To bring. I have brought. Bringen. Ich habe gebracht. As I pointed out initially, the perfect tense in German is normally formed with the auxiliary haben, like in English. So the next issue is when to use the auxiliary verb sein to form the perfect tense. The auxiliary verb sein is mostly and most importantly used with verbs that indicate a change in place, like fahren, fliegen, gehen, etc. By the way, this used to be the case in English too, and remains in archaic expressions, such as in the Christmas carol, Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Sein is also used for a small number of other verbs, which are verbs expressing a state, like sein and bleiben, or a change of state, like werden, sterben, einschlafen, or niederbrennen, as in our dialogue. As well as verbs that relate to happenings and relative success, like passieren, geschehen, to happen, begegnen, to encounter, erscheinen, to appear, and gelingen, or misslingen, to succeed, to fail. So it is... Ich bin ins Kino gegangen. Er ist leere geworden. Das Haus ist niedergebrannt. The house burnt down, change of state. But... Das Haus hat gebrannt. The house burnt, no change of state. Es ist nichts passiert. A couple more things. Do you remember the verbal frame? Of course you do. And the perfect tense is a major application for the drum roll. The auxiliary verb, haben or sein, in its finite form, is in second position. The rest of the verb follows with the past participle at the very end of the sentence. Ich habe alles genau geprüft. Er hat gestern Abend ferngesehen. Ich bin gestern im Supermarkt einkaufen gegangen. Sie hat gestern mit Renate Tennis gespielt. And do you also remember what happens to the finite verb in dependent clauses after a subordinating conjunction? Yes, the finite verb is kicked to the very end. So you have... Ich habe alle meine Freunde eingeladen. Ich koche, weil ich alle meine Freunde eingeladen habe. And if a dependent clause is put first, it counts as the first element. In the perfect tense, you have therefore... Weil die Nachbarn die Post holten, ist das Haus nicht niedergebrannt. Bevor ich gereist bin, habe ich das Gas abgestellt. But when do we actually use the perfect tense as opposed to the simple past? I have seen the film versus I saw the film. In English, we use the perfect tense to talk about actions that have happened in the past and continued up to the present. I have learned about the dative case and now want to learn about the past tense. He has played soccer for the same club every season. I have drunk my tea and should be getting home. In German conversation, the perfect tense is used to talk about all actions that happened in the past, even if they don't connect to the present. Ich habe viel gelernt. Er hat Fußball gespielt. Ich habe Tee getrunken. In English, there's a difference in meaning between the perfect tense I have seen the film 
and the simple past. I saw the film, but there is no difference in meaning in German. Rather, the perfect and the simple past are used in different contexts. We use the perfect tense in all forms of oral language. We use the simple past in written language. The two tenses are therefore sometimes also referred to as the conversational past and narrative past. Of course, there are some exceptional circumstances, like writing a chatty letter to a friend using the perfect tense, or when you read a story out loud in simple past. But basically, when you speak, you say, "Ich habe ihn gesehen." And when you write, you use, "Ich sah ihn." And we'll deal with the simple past in another module. The only exceptions are the verbs sein and haben, when we tend to always use the simple past, as. Ich bin gewesen. And ich habe gehabt. Are simply too cumbersome compared to the simple. Ich war. And ich hatte. The modal verbs are mostly used in the simple past form too. Ich konnte. Ich wollte. Er musste. Haben Sie das alles verstanden? Gut, dann üben und spielen wir. Meine Reise nach Deutschland habe ich so genossen. I enjoyed my trip to Germany so much. Ich habe so viel gemacht und gesehen. It's really important to be able to communicate about past things, and I'm sure you've been sorely missing this skill when speaking German. Well, not any more. The past has just opened up its doors to you, and you can finally tell your study buddy in German just what you've been up to since your last conversation. But let's practice a bit first, so that those past participles are in free flow instead of having to be painfully extracted. Let's make speaking about the past an effortless pleasure instead of brain surgery. <laughs>